Bienvenido and welcome to Fenton High School virtual town hall meeting. I am Superintendent James Ontanko, and on behalf of the Fenton Board of Education, thank you for joining us on this beautiful Saturday morning. With me this morning to help and our panelists is our principal, Mr. Uh, Jovan Lazarevich, our assistant morning. superintendent, Dr. Sam Benson, our director of curriculum and instruction, Mrs. Uh, Michelle Papanicolaou. Our goal this morning is to review our fall learning plan, review our Fenton, how Fenton will uh, start next week, review our safety and wellness protocol when students are in the building, and most importantly, answer your questions. Before we start, Fenton meetings commence with the reading of our mission statement, belief statement, and Bison Way. Fenton's uh, mission statement, to cultivate successful, passionate learners through rigor, relevance, and relationships. Fenton's belief statements, successful, passionate learners thrive when we champion innovative teaching and engaged learning. School and home collabor collaborate effectively. We provide a safe, secure, and caring environment. We infuse social and emotional learning into academics and culture. Diversity empowers our learning community. We prepare our students to fulfill their civic responsibilities. Our bar Bison Way. Students and adults at Fenton High School create a safe, caring, empathetic environment where we believe in each other, respect diversity, communicate openly, grow together, and hold each other to high expectation to become the leaders and innovators of the future. Before we start um, our town hall meeting, it goes without saying that there has been a lot of thought, planning, and energy uh, into this learning plan. We work with our state, local, and uh, federal agencies to create what we believe the most effective and safe plan for our FEN community. Our partners includes, but not limited to, the Governor's Office, the Illinois Department of Public Health, DuPage Regional Office of Education, DuPage County Health Department, DuPage Superintendents, District 2 and District 7, our Fenton staff, specifically our teachers, and the Village of Bensonville and City of Wooddale. We will start by showing two screencasts. The, the first screencast will provide our audience a general description of our fall learning plan. The second screencast will drill down and describe in detail our remote Learning Plan 2.0 in a frequently asked question format. Dr. Batson, let's roll with the first screencast. Hello, I'm Superintendent James Ontanko, and welcome to our first Fenton 100 and 100 Seconds update. As you saw in my email last week, Fenton High School will start the fall semester on August 12th using our bolstered remote learning 2.0. Fenton's target date to start our hybrid plan is on September 14th. Our priorities throughout this global pandemic has stayed consistent. Safety and wellness, continued learning, on-time communication. Our decision places students at the center of our planning efforts and based on safety and wellness of students, families, staff, and community. We will continue to adhere to the mandated health and safety guidelines from the public health departments and regulating agencies. Our plan incorporates a bolstered new and improved remote learning 2.0. It is better than the spring remote learning plan. It is more rigorous, there is more student support, more student structure and accountability, and yes, traditional grading is back. There will be more parent communication opportunities and an improved synchronous and asynchronous learning experiences. Our hybrid learning plan is dynamic and flexible. Our students will be divided into two teams to reduce the number of students in the building, blue team and orange team. There will be two days of in-person learning and three days of remote learning under this plan. I hope you could join us at one of our Zoom town hall meetings, which will occur on August 6th and on August 8th. More information can be found on our website. Thank you for watching Fenton 100 in 100 seconds. Go Bison. 
and you are here today right now uh, for our virtual uh, town hall meeting on Saturday. Uh, we hope the screencast provided our audience a general view of our fall learning plan. Two big concepts were covered. One was remote learning 2.0 and our hybrid learning plan. This next screencast focuses on remote learning 2.0, which will start next week, August 12th. The voice you're gonna be hearing is our uh, Director of Curriculum and Instruction, Mrs. Papa Nicolau. Good morning, this is Michelle Papa Nicolau, Director of Curriculum and Instruction at Benton Heights School. Never could anybody have anticipated a school year like the one we are about to begin. But we, the teachers, staff, and administration want to assure you that we are ready. We are sure that we will have to adjust and pivot at points but we feel confident that your child will have a quality learning experience this fall. We also know that this will take a great deal of collaboration between school and home, and we are grateful for your partnership in this endeavor. For your convenience, we've put together a short screencast with some FAQs related to the parent and student experience throughout the first two weeks of school. Let's get started. FAQ number one, what will my child's first day of school look like on August 12th? Actually, the first three days of school, August 12th, 13th, and 14th, will all look similar. Students will attend class with their Bison Time teacher from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. We are calling these first three days of school our student boot camp. During this time, students will reconnect with classmates, learn about their schedule, their expectations as learners, how to manage their time and workload, etc. They will also have homework each day in which they will learn how to use technology tools that can ensure their success in the remote learning setting. On the last day of boot camp, students will have access to messages from all of their teachers about their academic classes that will start on August 17th. How will we know where to go for boot camp? Students will automatically be placed into their Google Classrooms by their teachers no later than Monday at 3 o'clock p.m. Students should log on to their Google account, pull down their Google app from the menu on the top right corner of their screen, and choose the classroom icon. They will find their Bison Time classroom in this section. FAQ number two, what will my student's schedule look like when they start classes on August 17th? All students are expected to be available for live online sessions from 10 o'clock a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. They will also be required to attend their live Bison time on Mondays from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Each class will host two potential live sessions a week for which students should ensure they are available. One session will be mandatory for all students. The other session may be optional depending on the expectation of the teacher. When looking at the schedule in front of you, you will see that period four runs two days in a row on Tuesday and Wednesday. Under the period, you will see either live whole class connection or live small group whole class support. The first day is to ensure every student has the opportunity to interact with their teacher and classmates. The second day is to be utilized by the teacher to support small groups of students or at times the whole group for certain areas of their learning that need further addressing. There may be times on the support day where students are excused from their live session and are able to complete their work independently. FAQ number three, what will my student be expected to do on Mondays and outside of the hours of 10 a.m. to 3 p.m.? Every course will have expectations for student learning outside of the live connection and live support days. These expectations will be provided to you and your student at the beginning of each week by Monday at 10 o'clock a.m. Students are expected to review these weekly outlines on Monday, begin planning, organizing their weekly responsibilities, and continue engaging in their remote learning tasks. FAQ number four, how is this remote plan different than the remote learning plan my student experienced in the spring? Well, besides higher levels of structure and the expectations for students to be available for live sessions, there are higher levels of accountability. Attendance will be taken for both um, live connection class periods and on a daily basis. Students will need to submit a daily e-learning attendance form every day by 3 o'clock p.m. Additionally, students will be expected to master learning and earn a passing grade in order to earn course credit. No student will earn credit unless they've completed and passed the essential assessments for the course and have shown evidence of their learning. The grading scale will continue as it had in the past prior to COVID. FAQ number five, 
How will I know what is expected of my child in each course and how can I support them? At the beginning of each week, parents will receive a weekly outline from each of their child's teachers. This outline will include a checklist of assignments for the week, where to find assignments, where to turn them in, teacher contact info, etc. In addition, we encourage parents to sign up for their child's Google Classroom and communicate regularly with their child's teachers. FAQ number six, what if my student is struggling to find success in remote learning? Office hours have been set aside for both you and your child from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. throughout the week. Each teacher will post their available days for this support at the beginning of each week and post available appointment times for you and your child to sign up. If you are not able to join a specific appointment slot, no problem. You may email a teacher anytime with questions. Students failing to earn a passing grade will also receive an extra layer of support. After the first three weeks of school, if they are still struggling, they may be assigned uh, to an online accountability mentor or an online academic support teacher on Mondays between the hours of 10 p.m., sorry, 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. Finally, if you have a significant concern about your child's socially social emotional well-being or use of technology, we encourage you to reach out directly to your child's counselor for assistance. Finally, FAQ number seven. How can I stay up to date with Fenton's remote learning plan and how can I provide feedback about how it is working for my child and our family? Fenton will provide information through a variety of communication methods throughout the school year, including town halls, Wednesday words, etc. In addition, we will continue to survey parents and conduct focus groups throughout the year to better understand the experience in the home learning environment. Finally, Fenton will host a Parent Academy series where screencasts will be provided on a regular basis for guidance on how to support the home learning environment, how to navigate certain technology programs, et cetera. Here's hoping to a positive start to the school year and our continued partnership in navigating these unprecedented times. Thank you in advance for your partnership and we look forward to seeing all of the students as they return to us on August 12th. Have a great day. Wow, that was a lot of information. Good information there. Um, and it's okay if you didn't absorb all of it or understand all of it. We are here to support you. Give us a call. Three things I would like to point out there real quick. One, I hope you appreciate that it's a bolster remote learning plan, uh, different from what we experienced in the spring. Number two, there's more student structure, accountability, and number three, most importantly, we need your feedback. We have built in communication, um, communication lines for you to take advantage of, and I hope you could appreciate that. Once again, we ask for your support. We ask uh, to be flexible and reach out to us. Now we will transition to safety and wellness, uh, and that includes our PPEs, our wellness procedure, masks, social distancing, uh, during the hybrid learning plan. Okay, once again, as Mrs. Papanicolo and I have described, the hybrid learning plan is a combination of remote learning and in-person learning. During the hybrid learning, students will attend school in person twice a week and remote learn three times a week. Parents and students, it is critical that the student abide by our safety and wellness protocol when, when, when they are physically in the building at Fenton High School. Okay, once again, this next part right here, which will be facilitated by Dr. Batson, will review our safety wellness during hybrid when kids are in the building. Dr. Batson? Okay, thank you. Um, and we wanna emphasize again, as uh, Superintendent Antanko said, that, that safety security of all our stakeholders is our number one priority. Uh, and we've seen that already through textbook pickup. And as we already have employees uh, in our building practicing these, uh, these best practices for safety. So PPE is our first topic, masks. We have a, a, a cloth mask for each staff and student, uh, courtesy of the state of Illinois that will be distributed uh, at some point. Currently, as, as we've said, we're in remote learning, but we will get those masks out to students we also have other masks on hand um, in case we are in a hybrid environment and in case someone uh, forgets their mask on any given day. 
Obviously, we're talking about social distancing, six feet apart. We have signage all over the building uh, that we have already put into place. And obviously, important aspects like washing your hands and, and those, those other recommendations. So um, we also have disinfecting stations throughout the building. Uh, we started that in the spring and will continue in the, uh, during the school year to have these disinfecting uh, dispensers in each classroom, as well as pumps. We have also uh, worked with our custodial crew on having a safe and secure environment by purchasing new equipment to ensure that, that all areas are disinfected properly. And we improved our practices uh, throughout the building. As far as in a hybrid setting, we would do temperature checks of all of our students. We purchased equipment where we'd have a, two scanners at the front door. We would scan students as they enter and answer the series of uh, health related questions that they're fever free and don't have uh, COVID symptoms. So we will implement that uh, in a hybrid setting and we want to just make sure everyone is safe. So that's what we do for all students and, cl and classroom teachers will self-certify that they don't have those symptoms. Classrooms are already uh, being set up. Obviously, uh, we will follow the Illinois Department of Health guidelines. So we're looking at anywhere from 12 to 14 uh, desks in the classroom, six feet apart, and some of our larger rooms we can accommodate more. We will have directional hallways. Uh, this is why in a hybrid setting we would have a 10 minute passing period uh, because you, you probably won't take the quickest route to your class, but you'll take the safest route to your next class. It may take a little bit more time, as well as stairwells are also directional. Uh, we also look uh, at our bathroom capacity. We'll list how many students can be in the bathroom at any given time, depending on the size of the bathroom. And our security team will also make sure that uh, there's the, the proper number of students in those areas. We will not use lockers in a hybrid setting or gym lockers. Uh, hence, being able to uh, walk to class with a backpack is fine. Um, Food service, we are looking at a grab and go environment. If you look at the hybrid, uh, hybrid schedule, uh, the students' classes are, are bunched together and at the end is the grab and go where you would grab the lunch and then be on your way for, for the day. We also will have breakfast served in a similar fashion when students arrive. And finally, transportation. We will have bus transportation in a hybrid setting and we have about 24 seats per bus. And so our goal is to have one student per seat, which falls within the guidelines and we're arranging our routes. Uh, we're just fine tuning our routes here as we do textbook pickup and online registration. Thank you, Doc, Dr. Betts, uh, Benson there. As I hope uh, our audience uh, appreciate the work that has gone through keeping your children safe when they're in the building. It's, it seems so, uh, how Dr. Uh, Benson presented, it seems so simple and flawless. There was a lot of work that went behind uh, uh, all of these precautions, whether it's uh, changing the outlook of, the, of our school, changing the rooms, the cleaning, the disinfectant. Uh, we want your kids safe. Uh, we know uh, folks are worried about that, and we are doing our best, and we'll continue to do our best to make sure our building is safe for our staff as well as our students. This next slide's here. I'll cut to the chase here. So um, what do we do when someone has COVID, or what do we do when someone is exposed to someone who, who has uh, COVID, or someone is sick or feeling sick um, during hybrid inside the building? Very simple, we're gonna follow the protocol that is uh, given to us uh, by the Illinois Department of Public Health. In summary, what it says is basically identify, quarantine, and communicate, and we pivot any way we need to do it. So once again, identify, quarantine, and communicate to our stakeholder about what's going on here. Um, as you could see here, this is a flow chart. Uh, the, the DuPage superintendents requested a, a flow chart like this or decision tree, if you wanna look at it, when someone 
is exposed to COVID or has COVID or just not feeling well. So we do also have this strong layer of precaution. And it goes without saying, if your kid is not feeling well or you're not feeling well, don't come to school. If you got a fever over 100 and 100.4 degrees, you know what to do. All those guidelines are out there. So we, we will follow the guidelines. There will be more guidelines from the Illinois Public and Public Health. And we will uh, look at it and put it into action. Next up um, is basically, so we gave you a huge picture of what will take place this fall semester, but we're gonna drill down. We're gonna drill down really in regards to next week. And we have our principal, uh, Mr. Lazarevich, will we'll drill down and, 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 and describe what we're looking for next week and student expectations next week. Principal? Um, uh, thank you, Superintendent Ontango. Uh, so Ms. Papanikal covered this a little bit in her um, frequently asked questions for parents. Um, but what we'd like to go over is kind of a day to day uh, what it would look like for your students. So um, starting obviously this Monday and Tuesday, those are teacher institute days. So there will be no requirements for students to check in. Um, and then uh, Wednesday of next week, um, August 12th, 13th and 14th, uh, Ms. Papanikal did refer to it in her um, in her um, screencast also that will be a boot camp so it'll all look similar they'll be checking into their bison time and um, having um, interactions with their bison time teacher and basically that's to teach them how to uh, learn in a remote learn in a remote environment um, so it's checking emails uh, notifications um, how to set up google appointments um, calendarly appointments so there, there's a lot of things that we're, we're going to try and do and so we're, we're calling that a boot camp for our students there is work outside of the day for that as well so students will check in at 10 o'clock in the morning starting august 12th uh, i'm sorry 12th 13th and 14th and uh, they'll go through screencast videos and interactions with their bison time teachers again it's to get them uh, accustomed to the remote environment and how to be successful in the remote environment Unfortunately, we didn't have that opportunity in the spring and we recognize that that was something that our students need. So that's the beginning of next week. Starting August 17th then, what you see on the screen is, is what will occur in terms of a weekly, uh, weekly um, uh, schedule for the students. So notice that at 11 o'clock is the first time that students will check in on that day and that's their bison time. The bison time that's normally during the school year will now be used for opportunities to um, check in with the teacher. Um, there'll be a lot of social emotional learning that will be going on through that bison time, as well as um, school information that will be pushed out to, to students during that time, uh, announcements, uh, things of that nature, as well as opportunities to meet with other staff members um, from the building, uh, social workers, counselors, um, deans. Um, so uh, other things that, that are necessary for the student to stay connected with Fenton High School and their learning experiences. Um, then there's lunch at noon, and after one o'clock, there's a student support and enrichment system. And Ms. Papanikola talked talk a little bit about this. We're going to look at students that aren't being remotely, and at some point, if we need to, we, we we're going to consider bringing certain students in. There's uh, an opportunity for um, the um, there's an opportunity for those students in an enrichment opportunity as well. Uh, to make sure that they are are um, getting a diverse um, and um, differentiated uh, experiences within their classroom. Starting on Tuesday and Wednesday, Ms. Papanikola talked about this, we have a um, period four, it'll be two days in a row. There will be live instruction that'll occur uh, through Google Meets and Zoom uh, meetings. Uh, so if you see that it's a block schedule, also note that if your child has a zero hour class, that it will be, um, those will meet on Tuesdays and Wednesdays as well and not on Thursdays and Fridays. Um, our remote schedule matches our hybrid schedule. We did that for consistency for our students. Um, if and when we do move to a hybrid schedule, this way they will always have period four first, period three, two and eight. Uh, again, it matches why, why we did period four and five, uh, six and eight in those spots is because if we do move to a hybrid setting, it allows us to have, um, ha it limits our capacity within the building. So period four is a lunch hour, period eight students can leave early, period five again a lunch hour, period six a lunch hour. So we'll have um, students in the building, but we'll be able to move certain students outside and allows for our flow uh, of students in and out of the building. Also note that at, by three o'clock every single day, students will need to again, check into their bison time. That's another layer for us to make sure that we're checking in with our students. And so that way we have 
Um, again, just checkpoints. Uh, we want to make sure that we're staying in contact with all of our students as we go throughout the week. Um, so again, there will be live interactions every single day for our students. There will be independent work that goes outside of the day. Um, everybody has lunch from noon to one. Um, that allows for our food service. Uh, we will be um, distributing food to our students. Uh, there is a slight change in that. It's only our, our students with IDs will be able to get it. That will be distributed from 8.30 to 10 o'clock, still through our bus lanes, as well as from 11.30 to one o'clock every single day um, that we are in remote learning. So um, we're providing opportunities and timeframes where students can get fed um, and we can make sure that we have our uh, students in the appropriate block uh, attended. So again, this remote learning schedule matches our hybrid schedule for consistency for, for, uh, for our students. Thank you, Mr. Lazarevich. Uh, just wanted to reiterate, uh, you heard uh, our principal say that uh, the, the alignment, the schedule alignment between the two schedule of remote learning 2.0 as well as hybrid. Um, as new, new things develop, uh, here are a couple updates real quick. IHSA Fall Sports, um, as you've read my email, golf, cross country, and tennis will participate in these events once the Illinois Department of Public Health approves the Illinois High School Association return to play plan. So we're waiting on that. It's, um, it's in the hands of the Illinois Department of Public Health to say, yes, this is safe for our students. Once we get that green light from them, we will move forward. Um, also not wanted to talk a little bit about um, student behind the wheel. There was a lot of questions on Thursday about that. Yes, we're looking into it. Our plan is to move forward with the student behind the wheel uh, classes. Um, we know that's important to families. We definitely know that's important for uh, our students. And lastly, I uh, just wanted to reiterate that uh, we are waiving student parking fees this first semester. So that should be good news for our parents. Up next is question and answers. 